week. The alarm bells are ringing in Europe again. The continent's debt crisis is threatening a banking crisis, a new credit crunch and the end of the euro. In the past week, the bank's funding costs have soared and credit's drying up. Banks are eyeing each other nervously, fearing that their peers are exposed to toxic government debt. There are now grave concerns that Europe's indebted governments and banks are caught up in a vicious cycle and the threat of another deep recession looms. Stephen Long reports. It seemed like a good idea at the time. A currency without borders. Uniting countries as diverse as Germany and Greece, France and Finland. But less than 10 years after the euro became its common legal tender, the eurozone is in crisis, its future in doubt. You cannot really be optimistic when looking at Europe. I think the whole euro project looks very doomed now. European countries were quite different to start with. They were too different for monetary union, but they were united under one common currency, under one interest rate, under one exchange rate, and that simply didn't work. Now Europe is riven. Southern nations insolvent and risking debt default, the North facing the bill for the bailout. And the fallout is threatening the global financial system. There is now a significant risk of another global credit crunch. But the banks are struggling to get financing, and that's now the, the problem of the day. But the most important thing to remember is the two are linked, the banks and the governments intimately linked. The euro is crushing Greece. It's unable to fund its sovereign debt and in deep recession. But locked into the common currency, it can't devalue to make its exports cheaper and restore its international competitiveness. Likewise, Spain, where the unemployment rate's above 20% and youth unemployment is running at 50%. In the face of public anger, deep cuts to wages, pensions and public services have been imposed to restore government finances. But the bitter medicine isn't working. For Greece and for the other countries uh, with austerity measures in place, it's all sticks and no carrots. They have to go through the painful adjustment of austerity, but they're not rewarded with a, a corresponding reduction in their debt and they are not rewarded with um, an adjustment of the exchange rate, which could actually help to restore their competitiveness. Germany, the powerhouse of Europe, is lumbered with much of the cost of the bailouts, but Germany's politicians, power brokers and people are balking at the bill. If you really want to have an impact on countries like Greece and Spain and Italy, you would probably need two or three trillion euros to help them, and the Germans are not able to afford that. Nor are they willing to. You know, I think the most plausible scenario is uh, we see, uh, in particular, the German government uh, refuse to participate in any more country bailouts and just go, you know what, from a German point of view, it's cheaper for us to bail out our banks' exposure to those countries that are going to go broke rather than bailing out the countries themselves. But where does that leave the rest of the banks? The banks are extremely vulnerable because in Europe and around the rest of the world they hold a lot of the sovereign paper. And if there is a problem, which I think there will be with some of these sovereign countries, then the banks will have to take substantial write-downs on the value of their holdings. And that will result in a capital problem for them because they will become technically perhaps insolvent. The International Monetary Fund's new chief, Christine Lagarde, warned last week that banks are dangerously undercapitalized. Global accounting regulators have attacked banks for hiding the extent of their Greek sovereign debt exposure. And the European Central Bank is now being forced to prop up banks in Italy, Spain and France as their access to funds dries up. Some banks uh, seem increasingly reluctant to lend to others in the so-called interbank market. 
The reason being nobody trusts anybody. Nobody actually believes anybody other than themselves are solvent. So what we are seeing is gradually a seizing up of the flow of money in the actual financial markets, much as occurred in 2008, through just mutual suspicion as much as anything else. All of this is eerily similar to the lead up to the collapse of Lehman Brothers three years ago, which caused a catastrophic meltdown in financial markets. Are we likely to see a new global credit crash? Well, that's certainly what people fear. And if you talk to economic experts in Europe, they will tell you that it feels now precisely as it felt before Lehman went under. I think uh, Europe is heading for a Lehman 2-0 moment. More to the point, uh, there's a real risk now that Europe slips back into recession. Uh, once you start to talk about a European recession, you can e start to talk about the prospect of bank bad debts increasing again, uh, asset prices falling again, and of course, public sector finances deteriorating again. Does the Eurozone eventually split? Will the European Central Bank be forced to effectively print money and inflate away the debt at the risk of hyperinflation? However the coins stack up, it's hard to see how this ends well.